After several months of serious contemplation and many sleepless nights, I have finally decided to break my silence and tell my story. And it only seems fitting that I do so now, in the lead-up to the holiday season. After all, what I'm about to tell you took place almost a year ago to the day. I'd also like to add that you are the first one I turn to. No one else knows the full extent of my story. Not even my wife. But it's eating me up inside. And I need to get it off my chest. So, here goes. Last year, my parents invited my family and I to spend Christmas with them at their place in Montana. It was an invitation that I was more than happy to accept. I couldn't wait to get out of the city for a week or two. So, on the 19th of December, my wife and I, plus the kids, we set off from Seattle in high spirits in our Volvo X90, the middle-class version of the Ford F-150. When we arrived at my parents a day later, we immediately got into the slower pace of the life of the countryside and savored the calming effects of the crystal-clean mountain air on the little block of land where I had spent my childhood years. And, as is often the case when you're having a good time, surrounded by people you care about, the days just seemed to fly away. And, before we knew it, Christmas Day was there. I woke early in the morning to a fresh snowfall and the sun shining down from a cloudless sky and I instantly knew that it was going to be a good day. After breakfast, my dad took me aside and asked me if I could drop off his old Santa Claus costume at his neighbor's house a few miles down the road. The neighbor, Dave, had agreed to come to my parents' place and play Santa this year. Dad, being the enthusiastic grandpa that he was, wanted to surprise the children with a visit from Father Christmas and give them a memory they could cherish for the rest of their lives. So... Of course I said yes. And, to be honest, I was happy to get out of the house and not be bossed around by my mother and sister for another hour or two. They were all running around like headless chickens trying to get everything organized for the evening. So, I jumped into my dad's pickup truck and started making my way down the icy road, sneaking its way into the valley, and for the next twenty minutes, there were just trees, mountains and snow as far as the eye could see. I should probably mention that the nearest town is 40 miles away, and civilization in this neck of the woods consists of two houses. My parents, and Dave's. When I got there, I found Dave in the front yard, busy cutting down trees. He's my dad's age, fit as a fiddle, and enjoys the work that goes into maintaining a big property in the middle of the forest. He gave me a big grin when he saw me, and as I went over to say hello, he extended a massive paw and gave me the firmest handshake I've ever had. Then we did what most people living in isolated places do when they get visitors. We slipped on cups of coffee and talked about anything and everything. After half an hour, I finally got the costume out from the back of the truck and put it on the front porch. I also made sure that I did the right thing and invited Dave to come and join us after he'd finished playing Santa Claus. However, he politely turned down the offer and told me that he would be heading over to a friend's house in town later that evening. And, as I jumped back in the truck, he promised to be there at around five. I stuck my arm out the window and waved goodbye before I reached the end of the driveway. I once again heard the high-pitched sound of a chainsaw digging into a pine tree. Then, five o'clock came around, and Dave knocked on the door dressed as Santa Claus. And he truly looked the part. He was dressed in red and had put on a big white wig and a fake beard that covered most of his face. The look on the kids' faces was priceless. There was absolutely no doubt in their mind that the guy standing before them was the real deal. The show went on for a good fifteen minutes, and... After all the presents had been handed out and 
All the questions that the kids had for Santa had been answered. Dave announced in a deep, rumbling voice that it was time for him to head off back to the North Pole. And, as he was walking down the driveway, all the kids were glued to the window, waving goodbye. We spent three more days at my parents' house before we started on the return trip to Seattle. Before we left, I managed to convince my parents to come spend the next Christmas at our house in the city. In a way, I was sad to leave, but I was also happy to head back home. This day had made me realize that, although I liked to get out of the city every now and then, the city was where I belonged. I could never settle down in a place like this. The next time I heard from my parents was on New Year's Eve, when I received a phone call from Dad. I could tell straight away that he was upset. His voice was shaking, and he sounded like he was out of breath. And I immediately feared that something had happened to Mom. I cursed silently and wished that they didn't have to live in such an isolated location. But it turned out I was mistaken. There was nothing wrong with Mom. And, after having reassured myself of the fact, Dad got straight to the point and told me that Dave was dead. Then he went on to describe what had happened, and I felt my unease grow. According to Dad, Dave had been hit by a tall pine tree he'd been cutting down on his property. The sudden impact had killed him instantly. The police investigating the accident suspected that he must have tripped and not been able to get out of the way in time. I was absolutely stunned, but at the same time relieved that my parents were okay. Then there was a long silence, and all I could hear was my dad breathing heavily into the phone. And just as I was about to speak and break the awkward silence, my dad's voice came back over the ether again. Michael, he said. The coroner is adamant that the time of death was one o'clock in the afternoon on Christmas Day. Then the silence returned. And when I finally spoke, I blurted out that it could not possibly be the case, given that Dave was handing out presents to our kids later that evening. But Dad just ignored my comment, and instead began to fill me in on the details. He told me that when Dave didn't show up at his friend's place later that evening, his friend had gotten worried and driven out to Dave's house to find out what was going on. And when he got there shortly after seven, he had found Dave lying motionless on the ground with a tree on top of him. His friend had immediately called the police who had shown up less than an hour later and started gathering evidence. And this is where things started to get really creepy because the bag containing the Santa outfit hadn't been touched. It was sitting in the same spot where I had left it when I dropped it off earlier that day, on the front porch. The police had also determined that Dave's pickup truck had not been used for the last 24 hours. The engine was just as cold as old Dave, lying under that big tree. It was the only vehicle he owned. There was another long pause, and then, all of a sudden, I heard the words, ho ho ho, being repeated over and over in the background, and then my dad began to scream. This was followed by a loud commotion, and then the connection was abruptly cut, and the only thing I could hear was the pulse hammering away inside my head. At this point, I was panicking, my head filled with sinister thoughts about what might have happened, and I I tried. I tried to call them back half a dozen times. But every time I I, I dialed the number, the line was busy. So, in the end, I ended up contacting the local police. And when they finally reached my parents' property an hour later, they found my mom and dad crushed to death inside dad's pickup truck. It's all pine tree had fallen on top of the car, killing them instantly. The 
police at the scene didn't find any signs indicating that a home invasion or robbery had taken place. Everything seemed normal, apart from the fallen tree. The only unusual thing that was included in their final report was the black bag they had found in the back of the pickup truck, containing an old Santa Claus costume. Needless to say, no one is going to dress up as Santa at our place this Christmas. Heaven knows what could happen if the old fella came knocking on our door. <laughs>